Hello everyone and welcome to the 44th C programming tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to be covering how we can use bitwise operators in our programs and this is going to transition into the Coco tutorials on drag and drop. So again in another important tutorial um, added on from the 43rd tutorial that we did on C. So make sure you watch the 43rd tutorial before doing this one. And then this one's going to connect to the Coco tutorial that we're going to have on drag and drop. So that's really why I'm teaching this anyway, but, um, you know, I threw it in the C tutorials just to say that I made more C tutorials, and you can still use it in C as well, because it is a C concept. So anyway, uh, with that, that's what we're going to be doing in this tutorial, is bitwise operators. And we're going to be learning two operators in this tutorial, the OR operator and the AND operator. So... Uh, again, both of these pertain to Coco drag and drop. So, um, yeah. So let's just go ahead and get started. We're going to be using Xcode in this tutorial, uh, if you were wondering. And uh, that'll come in once we get uh, just the main concepts out of the way here. So, bitwise operators. Let's just start with the OR operator to get you familiar with one of them anyway. And the OR operator, uh, on your keyboard anyway, is located on the backslash key. So if you hit shift backslash, you will get the OR operator. It's just the vertical line that you see on your keyboard. And it's just located above the return key if you still don't know where it is. So with that, uh, that's the OR operator. And the OR operator, what it does in bitwise terms is it compares the bits of individual columns to each other. So Essentially, bitwise operators work like normal operators do, you know, plus and minus. They always take two numbers and you get some kind of output. So in uh, the OR operator, you're essentially looking at the individual bits of a number and you're comparing them and then you get some kind of output from that. So for our example here, let's say we have the value of 1 and the value of 2 in uh, binary terms. So um, you know, this number is value of 1, this one's 2, and we want to OR these numbers together, which essentially means we're going to compare every column we have of each number, and then uh, whatever those numbers add up to, that's essentially what we're going to uh, create here. So, for the bitwise operator OR, uh, we're just saying, well, we're going to look at this column here, and we're saying, well, does this, no if, the if either number has a value of 1 in the specific bit column, then our output is going to be 1 as well. So in this column here, the first number has a value of 1 in this bit column, and the second number has a value of 0. But again, the OR condition is that either number in the specific bit column has a value of 1. If either, col if either number in that column has a value of 1, then the output is going to be 1. And that's how the OR operator works. So as long as one of the numbers, either OR, has a value of 1, it's going to output 1. Now, the next, it goes basically to the next column and tests that column as well. The first number in this column has a value of 0, but the second number has a value of 1, which is fine. When we OR these two together, we now have a value of 1 because, again, either OR, that's what we're testing for. We're testing to see that one of the numbers has a value of 1 in them. And if one of them does, then the output will be 1 uh, in that specific bit column. Now, the same applies if we had a 1 in the column as well. Now, this number would be 3, but that really doesn't matter. We're just comparing bit columns. That's the important thing to know about bitwise operators. The number really doesn't matter in decimal terms. It's really just comparing the individual bits. So again, in this number though now, both numbers in this column have a value of 1, but that's that's fine with us. We just want to see that at least one of the numbers in this bit column has a value of 1, and if at least one of the numbers in the column does have a value of 1, the output for that column would be a value of 1. And so even with both of the numbers in the column having a value of 1, the output will still be 1. Okay, so that's how the OR operator works. And then essentially from this, you get a new number. That's how, that's the whole purpose of bitwise operators. You compare two numbers, and then you get a new number out of it with specific bits that are uh, have a value of 1 or 0. So, let's move on to our next operator, which is the AND operator, which is simply the ampersand sign, and it's now using AND. So, now, uh, let's go back to our original number that we had here, and let's see what would happen with 
AND operator. So the AND operator asks that we have at least we have one in both of the numbers for the specific bit column that we have. So for this first column, we have a value of one in the first number, but our second number has a value of zero. So they both, basically the first and the second, do not have a value of one, so our output will be zero. The same happens for the second column. The first number has a value of zero, so it's automatically, obviously, not going to have an output of one. Uh, the requirement again for AND is that both numbers in the specific bit column have a value of 1. If one of them has a 0, you've automatically broken that. So again, this column isn't going to work because the first number has a value of 0. Even though the second, value, second number has a value of 1 in that column, your output is still going to be 0. And so the number we'd get from this would be 0. Now, if let's say we had, uh, you know, let's go back to this example for whatever. Um, Let's just do, use this. If we had, you know, we were adding these two numbers together, you'd see that, uh, well, hey, now both of these numbers in the specific bit column have a value of 1. So now this column would be a value of 1 as well. And that's what we get from all this. It doesn't matter what anything else is, but you, when you're using the AND operator, you're specifically comparing that both numbers in the same bit column have a value of 1. If they both have a 1, then the output will be 1. And if they're both 0, obviously your output is going to be 0. That's how the AND operator works. There's only one combination. They both have to be 1. Okay? So that's how OR and AND works. And that's really the specifics of this tutorial. If you don't really get much else in this tutorial, that's fine, as long as you understood how the AND and OR operators work when you're dealing with numbers. Okay? So now we're going to flip over to Xcode, where stuff will get a little more complicated. So I'm going to kind of make the example of what we're going to do in uh, Coco coming up, um, but basically might be slightly confusing until we get into Coco. So if you're you know kind of confused, just make sure you understand how the OR and the ANDing is working in this tutorial. That's the specific part of this. So in Coco we have a set of basically d different things that we can do when we drag objects onto, for example, a view. So if you know we were using a Coco application and we set up this NS view that we could test to see when we drag objects, you know, a file or a picture or something onto that view. If we wanted to test to see whether the object is copyable, movable, deletable, there's different values that every copied object or any dragged object essentially has in Coco. So any object that you drag around essentially is going to have a specific number attached to it with the options that you can do or do with that file or whatever you're moving. So if you wanted to see if whatever you're moving around in Coco ha can be moved, then you could compare the specific options that you have with that object. So let's say, for example, that we have this view and we want to see you know, if the object can be moved or if it can be copied. So we'll just set these two numbers up. We'll say int can copy has a value of 1. And essentially, in terms of binary, this is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And then if we had another one, we'd have an int can move gets 2. And we'll say 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. And essentially now that's, you know, their values in binary. But the important part is that we're, we have these two values uh, that we can or together for our options. So let's say we want to see if the object we drag on can be copied or it can be moved. Okay? So if we want to see if it can be copied or it can be moved, we can make a new number. We'll call it int options. And we'll say, can this object be copied or can it be moved? And when we or these values together, we're obviously going to get a value of 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. Okay? That's the output that we're going to get in terms of binary because what we're doing is we're ORing these two numbers together and as you can see since this one had a value of 1 we OR those two numbers together like that in the same column and we'll get an output of 1 and then if we OR the two numbers in this column again since this number had a value of 1 when we OR those two together we get an output of 1 and that's what this number would now be in terms of binary. Okay, so that's what's going to represent our options that we have for uh, what we want, what we want to do. So 
Now let's say that the, the object that we're dragging on has specific options. And we're obviously not going to specify what options they have uh, because, you know, whatever object you have will have its own options. But let's just say for the sake of this tutorial, we can make our own options for this object. So uh, just call this dragged object. And let's say that it can only be copied. For whatever reason, this object can't be moved. It can only be copied. So with that, uh, we can say that, well, we want to see if, you know, if we can actually use this object. Since the options we have is that the object can be either copied or it can be moved. And so our dragged object is can be copied. So that would actually work because we were testing to see if this object could actually be copied in the first place. So we can say dragged object and we're going to use our and and we're going to we're going to and the two numbers together. So we're going to use the dragged object and it with our options. And you might be wondering, well, why why would we and it? That just sounds really weird. Well, just think about it for a second, and um, essentially this if statement will be true if the number, the output of this, will be anything but zero. So if it's a value of one, two, four, etc., uh, this object will be fine. You know, the uh, the if statement will be true. But if whatever is in the parentheses here comes out to be a value of zero when we add the two numbers together, then it's going to be it's going to fail. So let's just say that when they and these two together, if this is successful, we can say object successful, or object success. All right, and we'll have an else statement as well, saying that, well, if it doesn't work, we'll say fail, okay? All right, so now that we have those two things, uh, we have everything we want to test for this object. So let's just run through how this is gonna work. So like I said here, our dragged object is going to have the options of can copy. So let's just say the value of our dragged object can only be copied for whatever reason. Usually dragged objects can do everything, and that uh, usually means that it actually has every bit as a value of 1, but that's irrelevant. The point is, is that the object that we're testing for can only be copied for whatever reason. Okay, so when we and these two numbers together, we're anding our options with our dragged object. And our options are as follows. It's everything zero up till the last two. They have a value of one. And our dragged object is can copy. So can copy is right here, and our options are right here. And of course, when we and these two numbers together, you'll see that this bit and this bit have this, they, they're both a value of one, which means when we and this two, these two numbers together, the output from these two numbers anded together will be, in that bit anyway, they'll have a value of one. And so that's not zero. That's good. That means the object was successful. They either the, the object could be either copied or it can be moved. We don't really care what it is as long as it can do either. That's what we're concerned about. So uh, if we go ahead and run this now, you'll see that the dragged object can be copied. And the object was successful. Good for us. Now let's change this. The object can move. And if we go to run this now, or again, we have object success because the options that we had were can copy and can move. Since dragged object now had this as its value, when we end this bit right here with this bit right here, we get a value of one when we end it together for that specific bit column. The actual output is two, but it doesn't really matter. Again, we were only testing to see if it was something other than zero because that's we were all we were concerned with is that the options we were looking for were anything other than zero, right? We just wanted to make sure that it could either copy or it could be moved. So that is, um, that's how you basically can test to see whether your object can do either. Now let's just set up one other scenario and we'll say can delete. And let's say this value is four. There's a specific reason why you'd have it a value of four, um, because you'll notice the value of four now shifts the one bit over to another bit column essentially. If you had a value of three in there, then you'd have both of these bits to be one. You'd have a value like this. And that wouldn't be useful in any way whatsoever because when you went, if you were to test this value, so let's say for example, our can delete we made as a value of three, that's not gonna be useful in any way when we're using bitwise operators because this is basically saying, well, now this object is move is copyable and movable, which isn't what we wanna it's not what we want to compare when we're using this number. So anytime uh, you'll notice that you want to use bitwise operators, 
generally the numbers are going to increment by bit placement. So as you can see, the, the number 4 in decimal uh, shifts the one bit over another column. And that's that's important because when we you know we don't want we don't want all these values to be one as well because that's not what we're testing for. We're testing to see if it can be, be deleted. And we only want to have one one bit column as a value of one. So anyway, that's uh, that. So now let's just say our dragged object could only be deletable. That's really weird for an object to be only deletable, but um, you know, it doesn't sound very useful, but let's just say that's the only option it could possibly have. Now, dragged object would have this value right here. And so when we and our options, which is this value, with our can delete, you'll see, ugh, that's actually not going to work. Since the options that we had were either can copy or can move, it's not going to work when we ask it uh, to can delete. Can it, del you know, can delete isn't part of can copy or can move. Since when we add this number with this number, None of these bits have a value of 1 in the same bit column. As you can see, this one only has a 1 in the third column, but this one doesn't have a 1 in the third column. So when we end our dragged object with our options together now, dragged object has a value of 4, specifically the bit in this column, and then our options are going to be all these ones. And so when we end this number together, we're still going to get an output of 0 because our options, no, this dragged object doesn't have any of the options we're looking for. So when we go to run this, you'll see that we fail because when we add the two numbers together, the output isn't going to be zero, or isn't going to be anything that's not zero. So that's essentially um, how oring and anding numbers works. It's specifically bitwise operators. And there's more to learn about bitwise operators, but this is the specific stuff you will want to know for uh, when you get into Coco Drag and Drop. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave your questions in the comments below. And, um, you know, please subscribe to the channel and all that good stuff, and make sure to check out the Coco uh, Drag and Drop tutorial when that comes out as well. So anyway, I will see you next tutorial.